Hello, High Wire Woman, and boy, do I have a good guest for you today. I'm so excited. So um, I met Bridget Reyes a few years ago. A friend of a friend um, told me about her. So I live in Buffalo, New York. Bridget does not. She lives in the epicenter of fashion greatness, the city of New York. Um, and a friend here in Buffalo told me about her. And um, I can tell you firsthand, it's been amazing. So anytime I have an event or a party, I just text or email my good friend and say, hey, I've got this event. What do you think I should wear? Um, and she'll come back to me on a Pinterest board or text. This will look good. This won't look good. So I thought I'd bring her on today to talk about the new work from home uniform, how this pandemic has transformed all of us um, into, you know, definitely embracing um, a new type of wardrobe. So tell us a little about yourself. Sure, Rosanna. Well, it is so great to be here with you and, and to be part of uh, your new exciting venture. It is, it, I think what you're doing is really great. Um, my name is Bridget Race, and I am a uh, personal stylist, image, image and style consultant for women. Uh, my company, Bridget Race Style Group, I started in 2002 um, after leaving a career, a 10 year career as a fashion designer. And I really wanted to empower women, particularly working women, in really understanding fashion and style and how to create a style that works for them. And uh, since starting my business, I have also published the book Style RX, Dressing the Body You Have to Create the Body You Want. And um, I have worked with uh, clients both virtually, like with Rosanna, as well as clients in person all over the world. Awesome. And I do have to tell you, High Wire Women, that I did go to New York once and meet Bridget in person. I had a couple weddings to attend and I said, here's, here's my size, here's my budget. I'll tell you, it was transformative. Met her at, where was it, Lord & Taylor, I think. Yeah, it was Lord & Taylor, when they were still open. <laughs> I know, it's so sad that they're gone now. Um, but she had pulled a rack of clothes, I went in the dressing room, boom, boom, boom. In probably 30 minutes, I had two or three dresses that would have taken me days. Not only did I have the dresses, but they were flattering to me. I was comfortable in them. They were exactly at my price point. So totally an investment of time and stress and not having to go to 500 stores. So virtual and in person, both amazing services. So now a lot of us are working from home and it seems like every day I read more and more articles about companies saying, you know what, this work from home thing isn't so bad. Do we really need the big footprint that we have? Probably not. So we're going to keep a lot of our team even post pandemic remote. So what are you seeing in terms of what your clients are looking for right now? Um, have you seen a shift? Obviously we're not wearing dresses and suits at home, but people still want to dress. And if you're in a professional field like I am, you do have to look put together at least, you know, from the waist up. What are, what are clients asking you for these days? Um, I, I think you really hit the nail on the head, which is that sort of sweet spot of, of comfortable, appropriate, um, and professional so you can get on a Zoom call, so that you can be part of a conference, and also so that you can feel like you're still going to work. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, when I deal with clients who sometimes work from home and then are often at the office you know, they see this work from home day as like, oh, a day I can just sort of not get out of my pajamas. And, right. you know, I said in the beginning that this is, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And we have to put some effort into um, making ourselves feel good. Because after a while, mm -hmm. that sort of pajama living won't work. Um, yeah. So I, and I think what I'm hearing from women who were in very professional environments is that they were really missing that that midsection of I've been wearing suits or suited separates to work. And when I'm home, I'm usually just in my, my, my leggings or whatever. Mm -hmm. I need that mid casual, that sort of everything area that, you know, we live a lot in that area, but we don't really sure. focus on buying clothes for it. So I think that mid casual is actually the, interestingly, the biggest area I'm getting a lot of requests um, from clients to help them with. So are people looking for like mid casual shirts or maybe a step up from yoga pants? Yes, ex yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, you know, again, it, it goes back to this sort of un 
tapped area that we don't spend time developing and we're either living in yoga pants or we're living in work clothes. And, mm -hmm. and that's really, there's nothing, you know, they don't really have the in-between as developed and flushed out. And after a while, as, as you probably know from working from home all this time, you know, that starts to get really boring. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as far as tops go, I, I think that's another key point, which is I think they're calling them mullet outfits right now, right? <laughs> Where it's like party, business on top, party on the bottom. So Guilty. You know, we're, yeah, we're looking for those easy ways to look appropriate on camera, knowing that we're probably wearing pajama bottoms on the bottom. So yeah. that's another thing I've been really, especially on my blog, you know, giving these tips on how to like quickly get on camera because, you mm -hmm. know, those meetings suddenly pop up. What can you right. do um, to look like you're, you're work ready when you've been really sitting on the couch, perhaps in, in yoga pants and a sweatshirt? Yeah. And I feel like a uh, red lipstick on hand <laughs> goes a long way. I like always have one near me because if I have to jump on camera quickly. It's like an instant boost. Yeah. And, you know, even just a t-shirt and a necklace can yep. look put together. Yeah. The, the tips I usually uh, give are jackets or blazers that you mm -hmm. just throw over a t-shirt, uh, necklaces, earrings. If you're not using your headset, you know, earrings can work, a scarf. Um, and think about the colors that you're wearing that, you know, like lipstick can do that really can brighten up your appearance and make you look like perhaps you've um, you've rested more than you have. And you know, the, the other thing is zoom meetings has a really, they have a really fabulous feature by the way, which lets you sort of blur your image a little bit. I, I, I can't remember what it's called, but a little tip is on camera. It actually can sort of filter you a little. So you look oh. even better. on camera. Yeah. I'll share that with you. Uh, I'll share. Yes. So you can yes share I will you. definitely adjust my settings for sure. <laughs> So it also seems like a lot of our staple retailers are going under. This was happening before the pandemic and, you know, Lord and Taylor leaving New York City, really scary stuff. But we've heard recently in the last two weeks, JCPenney, which that's not surprising. They've been struggling for a while. Nordstrom, not surprising with their really, really, really high price point. Um, Victoria's Secrets closing 250 stores. So do you expect others to follow suit? I mean, where, where's traditional retail in a year? Like in 2021, are all the big players gone? I mean, there's not a lot of them left. No, I, you know, I think that this is a, a very difficult time, obviously. And, and I do see more following suit. I think J crew also declared mm -hmm. bankruptcy, um, you know, and, and the way I'm seeing it is that, fashion has needed a change for a while. It has mm -hmm. needed to recalibrate a little bit. I think they've, they've made choices like fast fashion or, um, you know, that haven't been good for the environment, hasn't good, been good for the way people shop. It, it's, it's not been the best choice. So, you know, yes, this is tragic and it's going to shake things up. And I think we are going to say goodbye to many of our retailers that we've known and loved. But I think it's the whole like evolve or die, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have, they're, they're going to have to figure out how to thrive in this new uh, landscape. Um, and those who do and also who aren't sort of, you know, there's a lot of these retailers that are going out are in major debt. Um, you know, how do they evolve to this new normal um, that we're living in now? Um, and so I can't, you know, yes, again, it's tragic, but I can't say that, I just always believe there's some good that can come from a bad situation. And I think it will be interesting. I think women, you know, I think this time has really taught all of us simplicity and what, mm -hmm. what do we really need? And, right. you know, how much do I need in my closet and should I be spending more? And so I think there's a, just a fundamental shift that's happening and I, you know, there will be some casualties, but I think that some good can come from it as well. Yeah, for sure. And it, it's, it's the world we live in, right? Like so much of what we do has evolved and how we live now is so different than maybe a year or two ago. And I think fashion's just trying to catch up with that, that, mm -hmm. you know, these 50,000 square foot retailers, not necessarily needed in the world where we have DoorDash and Grubhub delivering us McDonald's. Um, you know, we're such a fast industry, but for working women like us, it's tough. There are not a lot of options right now. Um, I struggle with it personally. You help me a lot with that. 
Um, there's not a lot out there. And I've really, in th during this pandemic, I've really thinned my closet out. Um, and I'm trying to focus more on quality than quantity, like some basic pieces that I can dress up because there's just not a go-to that I feel like I can continue to replenish. And that's, that's tough. And I feel like the older you get, the fashion choices become less and less. So I'm 48. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm way, way too old to wear, you know, Aeropostel or any of those younger brands or H and M. Um, but I don't want to wear stretchy polyester pants either. So there's like, you know, right now I, I, my lane is really full with like Chico's and Talbot's because I know I can get something that looks age appropriate that doesn't make me feel uncomfortable, but I think there are limited options. Would you agree? Uh, oh, hundred percent. And, and I think this is what goes back to the evolve or die. I think that, you know, we look at retailers like an MM LaFleur, let's say, mm -hmm. who, have, who have smartly navigated this new world we're shopping in, which is they're thinking more about solving a problem mm -hmm. and that their target customer really needs solved. Um, in a, in a really smart way for women who they like, they know their customers so well. So these, yeah. like you said, these big box or these larger retailers who are, you know, just trying to be everything to everybody or make it overwhelming and difficult, you know, they're not going to survive because we right. are now in a time where we are going to be online shopping more. So mm -hmm. we have to be able to do it in a way that is easy and understandable. And like you said, I mean, you get to an age where your, your choices are limited. You're not shopping somewhere because you want to necessarily mm -hmm. it's because you have to. Um, so, and this is what I mean by like that excitement, you know, and, and, you know, I've been in this fashion, I've been in the fashion industry for 25 years and I, I, you know, for as much as fashion, as quickly as fashion changes, they themselves don't evolve quickly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's always been the issue with it. It moves very slow with innovation and change. And typically it takes someone from the outside to come in and sort of restructure a business model. Um, so I think it is going to be one of those evolution situations where it's like, if these retailers don't figure out how to cater to their target customer, they are going to, they're going to fall by the wayside. Um, so I, I think that is that, well, that's my hope. And I think that I think with professional women, especially who don't have the time, they are going to be looking to people like myself mm -hmm. who do this for a living because we have to be able to understand like this retailer will work this. They don't have the time to, right. to order and ship back. And, you know, so I think that my industry might become uh, more important, especially if retailers don't catch up with the times. For sure. And, you know, the whole concept of high wire woman is trying to do it all. And like it or not, one of our responsibilities is to look presentable um, right. in the workplace. And that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of time right now because the evolution hasn't caught up and it takes forever to find good stuff. And actually, um, you turned me on to MM LaFleur and I will be blogging about them and, and they're amazing. Um, they don't have 10,000 pieces to choose nope. from, but the pieces that they have are super smart. I just ordered an amazing blouse from them that not only like fits perfectly, but there was a little um, tag included that said, this fabric will prevent perspiration. And I was like, oh my God, this is genius. Because how many times are you at a cocktail party or at my age have an impromptu hot flash where you're like, oh my God, I'm sweating to death. And now I have this amazing blouse that makes me look and feel good. And I don't have to worry about that. Super, super smart on their end and knowing their customer. Well, well exactly. I mean, if you look at everything from their business model to how they design clothing, right? So the sweat proof can be washed in the washing machine, yes. the one hour appointment, the, um, the, you know, and the other thing is there was, a, there's been studies done on this that, you know, we, we get paralyzed by more choice. And I think Yes. that we actually make better decisions when we have less options. Um, that's just sort of a myth that if we throw everything at mm -hmm. someone, they're, they're going to be able to, oh, look at all these choices. They actually become more paralyzed. So this sort of laser focused model of shopping is actually working better than if yeah. you, put, you throw a poor woman in a department store who's just looking for a good pair of pants or a black laser. And now she has to sift through all of it. Right. So, you know, that's, that's the evolution that I, I'd love to see happen more. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and again, you know, you, you brought up a great point about professional women wanting to look good. And especially when they hit a certain age, there isn't a lot out there for her for right sure. now to choose from. And it's, you know, it's sort of all mishmashed with like younger stuff and stuff mm -hmm. that's not professional and that sort of casualization of the workplace, which is great, but there still are women who require a little bit more polish. Right. So it's a very overwhelming landscape to navigate. And that's where you come in, my friend. I know. <laughs> so tell let me, us let about- me styles. Let me be your style Sherpa. <laughs> for sure, no, for sure. And it's such an investment in time and, and you know that you're, um, you're definitely looking good and feeling good in what you're wearing. So tell us about your services because you do a lot of different things. You can help people sure. with closets. Tell us about your blog. Tell us about all the stuff you do. Oh, absolutely. So in addition to my blog, so I have a blog that I publish um, uh, usually twice a week and it's primarily focused on professional wardrobe. Although I do, you know, professional women have other parts of their lives. So mm -hmm. I try to make it uh, well-rounded. Um, and in the past few weeks has been definitely tricky with this whole change of everything. Um, but in addition to that, I have my services. And like I said, I work virtually as well as in person. Um, I do everything from style development with a client. So a client can come to me and say, you know, I don't know what even my style is. Mm -hmm. um, I help them develop that. I help them uh, dress their particular body shape or body concerns. I do uh, wardrobe edits. So I get into the closet with them and you know, the nice thing about that is when you have a style goal, it makes editing a much easier process. Sure. Uh, I shop, shop with clients or for them, um, you know, online for them if they're not in person. Um, help with events, like you said. So it could be something from a whole style makeover to I'm going on a business trip or I have an event like you, you've had mm -hmm. many of where you have like to get something for that. Um, and I also do outfit creation sessions. So where we will work together to build outfits and, you know, record them and just everything's designed to make it easier, make it understandable. You know, the, the thing that was the, the, the biggest challenge for me coming from the fashion industry was working with women who didn't and them having a very different mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to really relay information to them, you know, how will they understand it? So that's something that I've, I've very much focused on as well. And I'll tell you guys, Bridget is going to be a huge part of the High Wire Woman platform. Um, she's one of the first people I reached out to because while it's all important for us to get our lives in order in terms of finance and marketing and professional development, we are all facing the same challenge. You talk to any working woman and it all always boils down to what are you going to wear? Um, and that's just a reality. You know, I won an award in my industry a few months ago and when the person called to tell me hey, good news, you've won an award. The next thing she said was, I hope you have a really good outfit. Um, and that's just, I was like, oh my God, that's the first thing I thought of. What am I going to wear? Oh my God, I want to look professional, but approachable and relatable. And you know, that is a part of who we are and what we do. So I think in this time, the pandemic could be really, really good for you. It will help so many working women that are out there. So if people want to talk to you, if people want to do something virtual, People want you to look at their closets. What's the best way to reach you? Oh, absolutely. So my website is BridgetRays.com, which I will spell quickly if, if needed. It's B-R-I-D-G-E-T-T-E-R-A-E-S.com. Um, you can check out my blog there. Um, in addition to that, um, you can read more information about my services. I offer a free 30-minute image and style as uh, assessment where I can better on so i can better understand what your particular needs are and we can map out a plan that works best for you your lifestyle and your budget i'll tell you i just had her looking at blazers for me we zoomed showed her what i had what we needed filling in some gaps so effective such an investment i don't have to go and look send me a pinterest board i clicked some ordered them done um couldn't be easier. I highly, highly recommend it. I will also, our videos go on our YouTube channel. So I'll also put Bridget's um, contact information in the YouTube link as well. So you can click on it and contact her. So before I let you go, you're in the heart of everything. You are in Brooklyn, New York. What's one thing that you've done during this pandemic? Like, are you watching something good, reading something good? Are you eating a new flavor of ice cream? Share with us <laughs> one, one fun thing that you've discovered over the last nine or 10 weeks now? 
Well, I would say it's rediscovered. I, I really gave up reading a lot um, mm -hmm. and I started reading again and I really loved, I, I use my, um, the library app and it's great because I'm reading like several books a week and I, I said to my husband, you know, now I know why prisoners read so much yeah. because <laughs> You really can escape and you know especially when this was at its worst it was like well I need something that's not right day in day out so I've been really you know happy about um, about about just you know getting up to you know reading again because yeah. I really had other things I was focusing on you know I'm a big knitter um, which I'm still doing as well but uh, it's been great to read again I've mm -hmm. really been happy about that for sure and I just discovered the New York Public Library app and got the New York Public Library um, library card and oh my god like mm -hmm. talk about having the world at your fingertips in terms of ebooks audiobooks oh yeah free movies music I was like whoa where has this been my whole life and I actually blogged on it this week because I want to share it with the world it's incredible yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's what I've done too and and it's like why have I ever paid for a book I like, know I, <laughs> I know you know, if you're if you're an avid reader, yeah, and you don't mind not physically having it. Um, I, I I'm right there with you. I, I I've been um, thrilled with the app myself. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm super excited for the High Wire Women community to be in touch. I am sure they will be, and I am sure you will transform their look. <laughs> Thank so you. So thanks again. Great to catch up and we will talk soon.